I am wonderful. <laughs> How you doing See, today? Well, this stupid thing. I hate these things. <laughs> this, this new thing that's going on right now with computers and I know. social media, I cannot stand it. I am I not know. living it at all. <laughs> But you got it working, girl. You got it working. I know, I know. That, that's what they tell me, you know. <laughs> well, you looking good. I see you. Hair looking all laid. Girl, I'm trying to keep this thing together. I hear you. I didn't put on a drop of makeup. I had a little allergic reaction on my eye. I don't even know what's happening. I'm like, uh, maybe well, let me just go bare face today. Well, I, maybe I still it's, don't even know. I don't makeup. know if it was. Maybe it's the makeup you right. were using, probably. Right. I or the like... Everything don't work for me either. Right. <laughs> but what I do find is that the cheap makeup, like the drugstore makeup, have been my best friend. Mm -hmm. A lot like, of people say yeah. that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She's been good to me and Maybelline, yeah. A lot of people say that. Like, you ain't got to spend a whole lot. You really oh, you're don't. Right. That is the you truth. Is the <laughs> well, truth. So how you doing? I am doing all right. I'm better now that you are here. Thank oh you so God. much oh <laughs> for taking no, time. No problem. No problem. How has this quarantine been for you? Lord, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, for real, for real. Like, I'm really, like, over it. I'm ready to get back to work. I'm ready to get back to normal. I'm ready to get back to something because this ain't it. <laughs> no, I know it is so crazy like I never thought I would live to see something like this I know right isn't it crazy oh my god I think you know you always kind of look forward to something happening and when something happened it's still like a calm a, a certain calm that you still have but the uncertainty of it all is what's like mm. it's scary it's really scary you don't know if you're coming or going day by day like yeah. and literally I didn't even, like, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cr it's just, but, you yeah. know, the light, the light's still on, thank God. Yeah, yes, blessings, praise God to that, for real, because that, I, you know, that always, means a lot yeah, these days. I always, tell, I always tell people, you know, everybody I talk to, we tend, we always talk about this quarantine thing, and I'm like, you know, well, the good part is your light's still on. <laughs> You still call me on your cell phone. So Seriously. I think we have, it's important that we look at the stuff that we do have instead of mm -hmm. focusing on the stuff that we don't have. So I right. said to myself, my sister had open heart surgery this year and, and to see her fight that thing, I ain't complaining about shit. Wow. wow. I'm not complaining about nothing, honey. If these lights get cut off, they right. just going to get cut the hell off. <laughs> right, we're gonna get some candles and keep it pushing. We're gonna right? get some candles and still still be blessed. Yes, ma'am. Yes. For real, definitely. I feel like pandemic or not, you always gotta keep an attitude of gratitude. Oh yeah. You oh, always do. Yeah. You know, and, and the more grateful you are and the more appreciative you are, you breathe more great things to come to you. Oh yeah, that is true. That is yeah. true. Yeah. I'm glad your sister is okay. Oh, she is, honey. You see her now. Like, she's, oh, my sister has always been a type that just worry about everybody else. I say, you worry mm. so much about everybody else and love people with your old heart, you needed a new one. You know? Wow. And now she got the new heart and she's still worried about, I said, look, I'm going to need you to calm down. Right. God gave you a we, second we chance. We need this heart that at least be in for a year. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. You know, before you start doing the most, but She's awesome, man. And I told her, I said, you know, this 2020 has been really crazy for our industry. But you going through what you went through, you was a ble you was more of a blessing to me. Like, I, I have nothing to complain about. Everything that happens bad, all the, the, the dates that were canceled, it means absolutely nothing to me. I still have my sister here, so. Nice. Doesn't it put yeah. things into perspective? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. complain about the wrong thing. Absolutely. Things to complain about. So I'm, I'm just blessed. I love to hear that. I love to. What are you looking forward to most when this pandemic is done? I am looking forward to hugging our fans and our supporters. You know, I, I really enjoy that part of it. Yeah. You know, the, you yeah. Know, the business part of it sucks, but you know, just to kind of be in front of them and, and just knowing that they actually paid to sit in those seats. 
I get a high from that. So you feel like, you know, they, they have a, a certain expectation of you and you just want to deliver. So, you know, the meet and greets I missed, I just miss everything. I want to see my friends, my coworkers. Mm. I miss Coco and Taj, like, like, you know? So yeah. it's just been crazy. It's it's been, but I'm looking forward to just everybody just kind of getting their lives together and still being creative. Because I think one thing this whole pandemic taught everybody is that you should always have more than one stream of income. Listen, tell them you if know, you don't tell you know, them, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know that it's so important. And I'm just thankful because I've always been a hustler. Like, I, you know, if I see something, a bridge falling, a, a building falling, I'm like, oh, hell no. Let me go get this ladder. You know I'm what that's from? Up out of here. You know what that's from? Compliments of the BX. Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> All day. Yeah, survival is fitting. <laughs> Yo, that saying is so true. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. New York. Anywhere. Anywhere. New York breeds hustlers. Yep. That's what part of the Bronx are you from? South Bronx, High Bridge. Oh, okay, right where Cardi B is from. Oh yeah, absolutely. And Casanova, yeah, Ab yeah, absolutely. I'm right from East to Forty First, North Bronx. Where at? East to Forty First, the North Bronx. Oh yeah, you up there with with the Jamaicans? Yeah. <laughs> boop, the, boop. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, White Plains up there. Oh yes. my, oh yeah. You, my family's you know. Jamaican. Really? My mother's Jamaican and my father's Belizean. Yeah. <laughs> so where's your mom from? Uh, St. Andrew, Kingston. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> you know, yeah. Jamaica yeah. is one of my favorite places. My brother-in-law is from Kingston. And okay, I, you know, I always enjoy vacationing in Jamaica because, honey, they treat me so good when I go out there. It is. What it is part amazing. do you go? Um, well, we don't go to the, you know, to where, you know, you, you keep it touristy. So yeah. we go, we stay on the tourist side of things. And that is smart. Really, Very yeah. smart. Please Absolutely. keep it smart. So, um, but we, what is the name of this, this resort? I think, is, is it the Royalton? Not Margaritaville. Everybody goes to Margaritaville. No, no. but this Not place was so beautiful. Oh my yeah. God. I'm like, oh, I could just live in Jamaica and, and the yeah. fish tea and you know, Jamaican women are just sexy as hell. You know, they, they just, they are unapologetically just sexy. They just put it all out there. And honey, I am all for it, honey. Yes, all, all that. Yes, for sure. So, so they said bring a drink, but I, I'm not a drinker, but I do love um, cranberry and orange juice mix. Okay, all right. So That'll I have do to it. ask That'll somebody... I had to ask somebody, and and I hope nobody judged me, but I asked him. I was, I was like, "What's the mimosa?" Okay, really? No I way! <laughs> I had no idea what the hell a mimosa was. So my friend said, "Well, it's orange juice and champagne, or wine, yeah. or something." And I said, "Okay, well, at least I got it halfway right." Yeah, 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 yeah. You did. Wait, time out. Where are you based? Huh? Where I'm are you in Atlanta based? now? Oh, you in, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay, so real quick, I just want to introduce myself to your followers. My name is Shannon Mack. I have a show on YouTube called Petties and Mimosas that I created. Yeah, it's I, my I saw that own... show. It, it was a location at first. Yes, yes. And everybody used to sit down and get pedicures and have this guy. I watched you. Thank you. Thank you. I yes. created it from nothing. It's a celebrity interview while we drink mimosas and have a pedicure. But being that, you know, the world is going through some changes, uh, I had yeah. to create the quarantine edition of the show. So it's called Quarantini and Mimosas. I love it. I love so, it. <laughs> thank yeah, you. I so it. I was going to say, if you're either in New York or L.A., when season three comes back around in January... I'm going to need you to come on the actual show, get a pedicure, and then I can make you a special mimosa. Break your mimosa cherry. <laughs> now you ain't going to get me drunk, face face. are you? <laughs> hey, just say the word. Right no, now, I don't want to. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is, but everyone, you know, first of all, no one believes that I don't drink. I believe it. A lot of celebrities don't drink. A lot of celebrities oh, that I've done the show with, no, yeah, they, they don't, don't drink. They don't believe that I've never been a drinker. They just... They, they automatically assume that they... You know, I'm just crazy as hell, but... Um, 
Man, you know, I, I just grew up around a bunch of people that enjoy drinking and almost stabbing each other to damn death. So I said, oh, okay, I don't want to be that one. I feel you. I don't want to be you. that kind of drinker. So right. I was always afraid to, like, really indulge because I probably would have been that girl that just walk outside naked and, and drunk and end up <laughs> in some, some dude car. I don't know who the hell he is or how I got to be, you know, so... So you would have been I'm the ratchet thinking, drunk. That's just, you know, I, I've done crazy stuff, but just the drinking has never been anything that I just desire to do. But I do enjoy my cranberry orange juice. And I don't mind my friends drink and have a little wine. And I, and you know what? I will say this. Mm -hmm. If I find a drink that's really uh nice and maybe wine because because my sister's like you know maybe you should try like a wine or something like that i don't know what to if it's sweet and and i can't taste the alcohol see that Lee, bottle that you need bottle, to try this first of all that bottle is too fancy <laughs> it look like it'll get you, you it's it's a liqueur so it's it's smoother it's made from real chocolate it's actually vegan I'm going to send you some. You just send me your mail-in address, and I'm going to send you a sample. And you, I, today, I mixed my, well, I'm, I drank it down a little bit, but I usually mix mine with milk, and it, it tastes like chocolate milk. I call it adult chocolate milk. It's so good. Mozart chocolate liqueur. So that's and they chocolate? Have, and they have five different flavors. They have pumpkin spice, white chocolate, dark chocolate, regular chocolate here, and strawberry. Mm, I, I, I bet you would like it. Can I try the strawberry? I'm going to send you, girl, I got you. <laughs> let me let me take it slow and try to, because I think the chocolate is going to send me to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> All you got to do is put a little, boop, a little drip. Oh, a little, somebody a say, little give drip. me, somebody say, give me some holy water. <laughs> Not holy water. That That's too terrible. funny. Well, honey, it's <laughs> holy water now, honey. Ain't no telling what's in that damn holy water. <laughs> That is too funny. So, okay. We got to rewind because I got a confession to make. Well, first of all, before I make my confession, I just want to tell you that you made my teenage years, my childhood so enjoyable. Like, really? as, what? Hell yeah. What? This is SWV? Are you so kidding funny. me? Yes, you did. Thank you totally you. did. We still rock and I still rock to you. One of my favorite songs I was actually playing before you came on is actually MCE, Man Crush Every Day. I love that song. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that song. I think that's love. the I Missed This album. The yeah, and it's one of the newer I, ones. No, still, I think it's off the still. still. Yeah, I forgot. What the hell was yeah. <laughs> that? Yeah. That dropped in, a, that was your last album. Yeah, that's a dope, that's a dope record. That's a dope record. Love. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I love that song. That's my joint. So that's oh, the yeah. first thing. So the second thing, my confession that I have to make is that I did not know that you were one of the founding members of the group. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm like, Absolutely. stop playing. So everybody, you guys started. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm, everybody asks me, um, you know, we always get that. We've been getting asked that question for so long. And. You know, when we first came out, we always gave the short version or whatever, the quick mm -hmm. version. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, actually, Shanice, oh, what happened? Okay. You know, Shanice Wilson kind of inspired me to even want to be in a business. Shout out to yeah. Shanice. She was actually on the second episode of Petties and Mimosas of my show. Oh, yeah. Like, you yeah. know, I saw her as a young girl on, on um, Star Search, this show. Remember Star Search? Yeah. And of course, like yeah. 12 years old, and she was just killing it. And I was like, you know, I would love yeah. to do that, you know. So it just, I just had a, a vision to want to start a group. And then, you know, Coco kind of took it. To, she didn't take me serious. I was like, I want you to be in, the, in this group with me. She's like, ah, whatever. When you get serious, you know, you let me know, whatever. But I was really serious. Yeah, how old were you but guys? Um, huh? How old were you guys? Oh, man, we were young. I think when I first approached her, I had to be 12 or 13. Dang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, let yeah. your kids dream. Parents on here, let your kids dream. Because look at what a 12-year-old 
a 12 year old's dream okay. turned into oh, that's yeah. incredible you'd be surprised to to know like when i was younger i used to listen to all type of music like my mom played piano by ear like i just told such a great talent that old school sound like i grew up on sam cook um you know um stacy Lattisaw. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! The people, Bryson, Stephanie Mills, Jennifer Holiday, and Dream Girls was my first album that I ever bought. Well, I didn't buy it, but my sister Malia, the one who had heart surgery, mm -hmm. she bought me that album for my birthday one year. That was the first album, the Dream Girls album, the original Dream Girls. We are Dream Girls. Yes, <laughs> all, all that. Yes, absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. And then you guys started as a gospel group. I I, I read. Everyone says no. We just started as a <laughs> so that's not, it, it, all right. Set the record it's straight. It's actually a crazy story. Like when we were younger, before we got signed, our only place to rehearse was at Coco's house. Right, Coco's mom had a brown mm -hmm. phone. It was really nice, and she had like this sunk-in living room where they had like a stage. So her mom would keep a keyboard on that stage part. So whenever she was there. She wasn't really into the R and B and the secular music thing. So whenever she was there, we would just fake singing gospel songs until she left. And then we then when she left, then we have our real rehearsal. That's the real story. Yes, that's the real that's the real story. So that's how we had to kind of go with that for a minute. It would look like we was lying to Coco's mom, you know, because but you know, I'm sure she wanted to sock us a couple of times, but that is too funny. Yeah. Oh so my that, goodness! So that—that is the true story. <laughs> oh, you know, my of course, God. you know, Coco has always been in in gospel music, and her mom, and and everything. And but that was our story. We had to fake being a gospel group just to rehearse in Coco's house. Look at that! Look at that! Do you remember the very first song that you guys recorded together? Oh, absolutely! Um, oh gosh. As the three of us, as Lily, Coco, and Taj. Yeah. The, the first song, I, I believe it was It's About Time. We recorded some stupid songs. <laughs> I mean, It's About Time is one of my favorite. That's hands down one of my favorite SWV records because it was the song that got us our deal. Mm. But um, we recorded so many crazy songs before we actually got signed. It was ridiculous. But I would say that was the first song that we recorded professionally as a group. And that version that you hear on the album is the original version. Like we, it, it's not mastered or anything. That's why when I listen to it today, I'm like, oh, this song sounds terrible. <laughs> the music is terrible. This song sounds you terrible. Know, but, um, it was a lot of fun. That was the first song we recorded. That's awesome. That is so awesome. That's, so what, I, that's what I remember, because, see, those, we all remember different stuff. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's definitely the, the first song. That's what's up. So you're in this this group now, and I, I want to talk about another thing that I didn't know was that you were a teenage mom. Oh, yeah. I, I had uh, my first child at 15. I had two by 17. Wow. And it's so crazy because when I tell people this story, you know, the first thing that come to everybody's mind is, is, oh my gosh, she was hot in the ass, you know? Mm -hmm. And part of that probably was true. But I think, <laughs> um, you, I, and I wrote all of this stuff in my book, and so I, I feel comfortable talking about it now. Mm -hmm. I was living with, you know, we, we just had a lot of unfortunate situations kind of growing up, and um. You know, my dad left me when I was 10. My mm -hmm. mother worked a job. She didn't make a lot of money. So we would get evicted a lot. We would get put out. So I was forced to kind of go play house with my boyfriend at the time. So oh, that's really? how all of that happened. And, you know, you you live like a grown-up. You do shit grown-ups do. And I had, as a result, I had two kids at 17. Yeah. By yeah. the time I was so how so how who I'm trying to wrap my head around you still being successful and you dropped out of school too, right? Oh yeah, high school. Yeah, dropped all out. that like and I still dropped, became a success. Yes, because I I dropped out of school 
on my way to the 11th grade, Walton High School. I never forget it. And at that time, we were living with my, we had got put out, of course, again. And we were living with my godmother at the time in a one bedroom apartment. Yeah. And, um, it was it was just really hard. I had to make a choice because I was pregnant. I had to make a choice. Do I stay in school? And back then, homeschool wasn't really that popular in the Bronx. Yeah. And right. um, I had to make a decision. And, you know, do I stay in school or do I get a job? My mother wasn't working. She was retired. So I had to get a little bullshit job just to kind of take care of my, my daughter, you know? Yeah. But I was so young. I wasn't old enough to work two jobs, to work one full-time job. So I had to get two part-time jobs. Wow. And I worked at Red Apple. What's <laughs> Red Apple? Red Apple Supermarket. I don't recall Red Apple. Red, Red Apple. Red, Red Apple Supermarket. They had some in the hood and they had one on, I think the one I worked at was on 96th Street in, um, wow. in, in Manhattan. And I worked, get out, Red I Apple. worked at Toys R Us. Mm. And they fired me from Toys R Us because I had a late studio session that night and I was late for work coming in. And I tried to explain to them, listen, I'm about to make a record. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, make yeah. a rec I'm about to make a record, you know? And they didn't believe me. And I'm, a I'm about to be like your favorite per Like, I'm about to be popping. Like, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I'm gosh. you. Yeah. What a story. What yeah. a story. So who was in your corner? Because I know that had to be difficult at 15, 16, and 17. Like, shoot, in oh, my 30s I now, I still barely got my, no, my way. Like, who was yeah. in your corner? I, you know, I, I had a hell of a support system. Uh, my family supported me. Because all during That's this great. time, like, I was working on music, even when I was pregnant. I was working yeah. on music. Like, we were still trying to do it and do it and do it. And I had a dope family support system. Like, my mom helped me out. My sisters helped me out. I was very fortunate because I think they saw that I was doing something positive. You know, they saw that I was doing something positive. And I, I just had this thing where I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to change. I already knew that people was judging me because yeah. I had two kids at 17. I already knew it. I felt it. When I was on the bus and I would have one kid in my hand and one in a carry, I felt the energy. I felt the hate. I felt the judgment. So I said to myself, you know, I'm going to do something great to change everybody's perception of me. And and the, the, the worst, the thing that you can do that can do that is is um, be successful. That's the best revenge. And now no one even gives a damn that I had a kid you know, young. because and, I, and I'm comfortable with it. It's nothing nobody can really say to me that's going to make me feel some type of way. I mean, I'm 47 years old now, so a lot has happened yeah. since then. But absolutely, you know, um, I had to tell this story. To that tell is... A, a lot of young kids. I would never encourage anybody to do that. That's why, as parents, we have to make sure that our kids have what we what they need to function and be effective. Because I, you know, when I look back, my mother tried. She tried. She tried so hard. But I wanted to. There's still something in my mom that I just felt like, gosh, man, you know, you could have pushed a little harder. You know what I mean? Mm. So I learned a lot of lessons from that whole situation um, with my with my parents and their relationship and stuff. So. Yeah, you know, I, I survived it. I survived it. What, I love it. That definitely is a testimony. What do you say to parents that when they find out that their 15-year-old, 16-year-old, 17-year-old is pregnant, they automatically kick them out the house and don't show love? Like, you were one of the lucky ones that got that had the support system. But I know a few people that, oh, and even my mom, I know, I, I think what my mom said versus what she would have done is two completely different things. Cause I think she would say, you get pregnant, you on your own. But I know that my mother would have supported me, but everybody's not that lucky. So what do you say to the parents that automatically want to kick the kid out the house when they do get pregnant at a young age? Um, I'm really careful with that because um, I, I, I think 
that will be the time to not get upset. That is the time to have a real conversation. Because right. obviously it's something happening and, and there's some activity going on that they're not comfortable talking to you about. Or, yeah. or we don't ask the right questions sometimes. And my daughter said something so profound to me. She said to me, you'd be surprised, mom, what, what a kid will tell you if you just ask. Mm. We don't ask these questions. We don't ask our kids, is this person touching you? Is he doing inappropriate mm. things to you? You know what I mean? We don't ask these questions. Yeah. Are you having sex? I remember I asked my mom, because I heard these conversations in middle school. I heard the kids talking about condoms, and I asked my mom, I said, Mom, what's a condom? And she said, you don't need to worry about no condom. Well, I, I can't use wow. it. I don't know to use, you know what I mean? So Wow. It, it's. I think we have to understand when to have these conversations and a lot of times it's yes. parents because I, I was one of them I didn't want to have these uncomfortable conversations with my kids yeah even with, even with my daughter like you know I've been through a lot of shit you know and and I, I still I, I pushed through I went through it I went through some real mother shit yeah some real mother shit even being sitting in the position that I'm in now you know, being an artist and, 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 and loving on fans and loving on people when my, my, my home life is, is full of hell. Wow. You know, so even in that moment, if my kids are going through something, I have to, you know, the first thing as an artist, the first thing we do is try to protect our image. It, it's a, it yes. comes a point in time you got to say, fuck everybody. I'm sorry. But I'm a cusser. Now you good. That's, that's, <laughs> you a, good. that's my advice. <laughs> You got to say, <laughs> everybody, I need to now mother my kid. I need to be a mother to yeah. my daughter. I need to be a mother to my son. Now it's time to have yeah. this difficult conversation. And I think sometimes as parents, we, we just miss it. You know, we don't have all the right answers. Yeah. We don't have all the answers, you know. But yeah. I think yeah. um, we just need to talk. We need to yeah. talk. And, Communication and my, is everything. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, when it comes everything. to everything, like when it comes, it's everything. When it comes to everything, <laughs> you know. Yes, absolutely. So, um, yeah, and then and, too, when you open up that dialogue, that's how you like break the generational curse. Oh yeah, you know, you stop it from happening because it's a cycle, you know. So, sure. and then on the oh, another part of it that I wanted to bring up was, and somebody said it in the comments where they usually discourage women in the industry from having children, like from having kids. They want you to, you know, stay focused on the career and they just want you to be like, you know? Mm -hmm. So how did you have that courage? Because you just said it like, fuck everybody. Like, I'm going to, to do this mm -hmm. no matter what you think. Yeah. How did you, where did you get that courage from? Well, um, in the beginning, well, when I was pregnant, I got pregnant so young we were still working towards a record deal. So by the time my kids were born, that's when the record deal happened after they were born. You know, okay. but still, you know, it's still, you still have those challenges because, you know, your, you, your kids are still present. I was yeah. the first one in my group to have children. So my responsibilities were different. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I made money for a different reason. I made money because mm. I had, you know, I had two miles to feed. Well, two right. more than myself. Right, right. You know, so my hustle was, was a little different, but I understand um, from a business perspective why they kind of put, put the whole uh, pregnancy, why they should put the whole pregnancy on pause because it fucks up money. It right. messes up money. It messes up budget. Everything in this industry is based on time, timing, quarters, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. So if you got a record that you're trying to release and you get pregnant, you could barely do promo. Oh. You won't complain half of the, 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 the promo tour. So, you know, they just yeah. try to avoid all the craziness. And it's not because they don't want you to live a real life. But I think sometimes we get into this industry and not really understand what we're getting into. Everything yeah. comes with a price. Everything. Everything. Girl is talking facts today. No, Are no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Man, listen. Do you Everything remember comes with a price, girl? Do you remember when you told Taj and Coco that you were expecting? Oh my God, I have a funny <laughs> story. Tell it, tell it, tell it. <laughs> oh, I lied so much. Like when I was pregnant with my daughter, mm -hmm. we were going in the studio doing demos and stuff, and um. I didn't know I was pregnant till I was almost six months. My mother told me. Yeah. I, because what? I got my, my menstrual, yeah, I got my menstrual all the way up until my fifth month. So I wasn't thinking, like I was flipping, I was doing cartwheels, I was a stupid 15 year old kid, you know what I mean? So um, my sister, actually my, I wanted some, I love White Castle, you know, we, we got White Castles in New York. <laughs> So I love yes. White Castle. So I went to, I was like, oh, I want some White Castle. So my brother-in-law, my sister, they got me these White Castle burgers. And I probably ate 10 out of the 15 White Castle burgers. And my <laughs> sister was like, mm -mm, something ain't Something's right. Something's up. <laughs> so my mom told me something ain't right. And she took me to the doctor, whatever. But when I found out I was pregnant, I didn't tell the girls right away. I lied. Mm. My manager at the time saw me. She was like, something is going on with you. I mm. said, no. I told the girls I had a tumor. <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> I told the girls I had a tumor, and they believed me because they was dumb, too. They didn't know what no tumor was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, they didn't know about no tumor. So, I, you know... It, it it was tough because you don't want to feel like you don't want to lose your shot. You don't mm -hmm. want to miss your opportunity, but at the same time, you don't want to to ruin their shot either. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like this this sense of selfishness that you feel like, damn, I, I can't disappoint them now. Like we we almost there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you had like like no morning sickness, no no symptoms I of pregnancy. Had nothing. I barely gained weight. I probably gained three, six, seven pounds, and that was the size of my damn baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Are Taj and Coco god godparents of your kids? Uh uh. No, okay. I um nobody ain't know about no damn god. I ain't even really pay my god. <laughs> you know, that wasn't we ain't know about all that stuff. Like we always right, felt right. like adults are supposed to be godparents to your kid to your kid. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So my sister, we have a lot of people in my family who are godparents, but we're really related. Like my sister yeah. is my son's godmother. Mm hmm My family too. Yeah. And my other sister. It's safer that is, way anyway. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, because you know, I mean, I don't think people really understand what that role of a godparent is. Exactly. And I think exactly. that's important. Yeah. And family usually usually gets it. Yeah. They usually get it, yes. They do. Yeah. Yep. So let's talk real quick about the 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 girl group dynamic. Okay. What what do you think, because you guys obviously were the one of the most successful groups of the 90s, mm -hmm. what do you think the formula was to be um, a successful girl group? Because we don't got, do we even have any girl groups these days? I don't even think so. That's the thing crazy. of the past. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so crazy. You know, I really don't think there's a formula. Um, I know when SWV came out, we knew exactly who we wanted to be. We we knew who we didn't want to be. We wanted to be ourselves. And still mm. to this day, you know, people talk about us, you know, they, they say we too hood, we too ghetto. That's that's where we're from. We right. learned our toughest lessons, you know, but but now, you know, we've had an opportunity to see all, you know, all parts of the world. So now we can do ballroom and give you hood at the same time. But I don't think yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's really a formula. I just think, you know, one thing I realize is that and I and I can attest to that because I I'm in this group. We wanted to look like the girls that we saw outside of our window. When we came out, we had doobie hairdos, you know, the twenty dollar doobie style. 
We had we wanted yes. to look like every girl that we saw in our hood. Every girl with the the little bucket. We wanted to brick. Yeah. And put the pins in. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We wanted to, to be all of that, but you know, for some reason, labels always tend to believe that they have to pretty much make a group. You know, to make a group yeah. who they who they feel they should be. And they and then everybody start looking the same. Mm, instead of embracing who you instead already of are. Instead who you are. And I think that's one of the challenges in this business, you know, because you don't want to lose the shot. That's that's your main thing. You don't want to lose the shot. So I'm going to be naked. I'm going to wear mm. short shorts, you know, and then that's not really who you are. You know, yeah. so I just yeah. think the people, that's why fans are so important to me. People who support you are so important to me because they decide if you're coming and you're going. They decide if yes, they going to be hot or not. They decide if they're going to keep your ass around or not. You know what I mean? Right. And people don't really understand that. They just they just don't understand how important supporters are. So I'm thankful. I yeah. would never believe that 25, almost 30 years ago, that, that our song week would be so effective today. Like, it would touch. I promise you. I promise. Honey, did you hear me singing a karaoke version before when you I, got in here at first? I did you know, hear me know, howling I like know. a dog? <laughs> I know. I know. And um, I, I would never believe, you know, we're doing what we love to do. And it's because of people that in, enjoy it, enjoy seeing us, enjoy hearing us, who've sold some positive things into us. And I'm just happy, you know, because yeah. it could be different. Yeah. It could be a lot different, you know, even though, you know, we have a tendency of writing people off. Like, I read some of the stupidest shit sometimes. Um, this girl <laughs> sent, I mean, took her time to write this, um, send us a message on our SWV email. And she's like, oh, Lord. oh, you guys should just hang it up. You guys are old. Your grandmother's now. You should just retire. Uh, excuse me. I'm a grand. I'm the only one that's a grandmother, and I could outrun a lot of motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and y'all still don't, got don't it. Do don't me. be a hater. Don't don't be hating. You know, like I'm. I'm right. I, that's something that I embrace because you ain't gonna make me feel bad because I'm a grandmother. Grandmothers don't right. look like our grandmothers looked back in the day. Exactly. You know? I embrace everything that God left me with. You know, I know this shit gonna right. get old and fall apart, but until then, right. I'm gonna, <laughs> until oh, then, I'm gonna embrace Maybelline. <laughs> you feel me? Exactly. And I don't you know, but you, I, I you just, are not a grandma. You're a glamour. I mean, I, 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 I take that too. <laughs> I, I How old is your grandkid? She's six. She's six. six. She's six. So, you know, we read the stupid stuff that people say and. And a lot of these kids, they be kids. I'm like, I'm old enough to be your mother. Like, you talk about right. that? Right. So, and you, you know, don't they understand. They always teach you and they train you not to read the comments. So it, it don't really, I don't, it don't affect me today. Like oh, that's what I'm to. supposed to do? I'm supposed to not read the comments? Is that the trick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't read the comments. Do not read the comments. Because, baby, sometimes I be wanting to reach through I the know. lives, reach through the phone. <laughs> Man, woo! <laughs> they will never Listen. say it in your face. So, you know, I just think never. that's why I don't spend a lot of my time on social media because it. I will. I refuse yeah. to let this and allow this to become me. I'm not gonna be exactly. sitting on here all day reading what people have to say about me that don't know me. You know what I mean? And, and I, you're I from the think, era where social media didn't even exist. I know. I know. So this whole thing is really new. It is so new. But, you know, we they say yes. we need it, you know? <laughs> I guess so. I guess. Yeah. Secret Candace or Secret Secret something says, uh, would you do a versus? SWV versus Escape. Oh, yeah. I love yeah, that would be dope. Escape. Those are my girls, you know? I think that would be something dope. I, I don't look at it as a as a versus anymore. Like it's more of a celebration of not oh, only exactly. music, but I think it'll be a celebration of girl groups. You know, because yeah. for some reason 
people all, you know, we, we kind of came up in this whole journey together. We took this journey together. We came out around the same time. And fans, for some reason, feel like they have to choose one over the other. They don't. We have a no, lot of the same supporters. Absolutely. Right. So I think we don't, artists don't show artists enough love nowadays. Yeah. And I think yep. once fan, once you put that out there and fans start to see that, they, they won't, they would avoid like the bullshit, you know, yeah. but we don't do that enough. We don't support each other enough. Everything is so clickish now, you know, it, it's just really yeah. bad, but absolutely. Yep. You know, I would love to, and I would so love for us to do a tour together. I would definitely mm -hmm. be buying a ticket, a few mm -hmm. tickets. That would be so sick. Mm -hmm. They should add y'all with like the Brandy and Monica. Like you, SWV, Escape, Brandy, Monica, TLC. Who else would be in that? That would be so sick. Oh mm -hmm. my God. I would be yeah. looking forward to that. Totally. It's amazing. Like totally. I think it'll just be one big celebration of of just music, musicianship, and just women showing that women can actually, you can make this happen, you know? Yeah, so I, absolutely. I would love it. I don't, I don't care. Like, I'm very confident in our catalog, and hey, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm they, gonna get to a little Q&A in a moment. They, they, they cut that check, because somebody <laughs> getting paid. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, Facts, you know, everybody got to reap the benefits of this, this thing. You know what I'm saying? Not just the people that founded it. We see them sponsors up there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, we I, know y'all got money. No damn, I ain't no damn fool. <laughs> right, right. No so before we get to the q and I got a, a few people that want to ask you some questions. I, I uh, created a part excuse me, of the show that is going to be called Lessons Learned, the Lessons Learned segment. So mm -hmm. I'd like for you to tell us, it's just, it's five, five questions. So mm -hmm. what's the biggest lesson you've learned as a teenage mom? Whew. The biggest lesson I learned being a teenage mom is making a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Mm. because a lot of times when we're young we like these guys we think they're gonna be around forever and you know when you're young you think young you ain't really thinking at all you know you think stupid yep. you know they you know you allow yourself to be <sighs> taken advantage mm -hmm. of and yeah. so um that's one of the biggest lessons i learned i wish i would have not chosen these guys to father my kids mm. Mm -hmm. And I call them sperm donors because I've been a single mom ever since. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wish I would have done that differently. If I can't change my life or things that happen, I, I just want to be able to put a different face to my situation. I hear you. I totally hear you. That's a big lesson for sure. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest lesson you've learned as a celebrity? Whew. Oh my God, as a celebrity, there's <laughs> so many parts to that. Um, stay in control of you. Stay in control of your money, stay in com control of your finances because if your celebrity and your finances don't, don't meet, why are you doing it for? Right, right. I mean, you can notice my face, you can, you can uh, recognize me all day, but if, if that shit don't equal fall in line with each other in my account. Facts. Hey, if it don't make money, then it doesn't make so, sense. So celebrity <laughs> don't mean shit to me. I don't care right. if anybody recognizes me. My whole thing is making sure my business is straight and making sure that when I do I go out there and I face people who admire me, I can do it with a smile and I have to think about, oh, you know, this is some bullshit. You know, I ain't got no money, right? you know. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of stuff that we deal with, you know? Yeah. A lot yeah, of stuff we deal sure. with, but, but definitely that. Definitely that. Make sure dope. you stay in control of who you are. Dope, dope. Mm -hmm. Dope advice. Biggest lesson learned from a man? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. Oh, Do we God. have time? <laughs> 
Okay, as Woo! far as my lesson or something he poured into me? A you lesson can both I if learned. you want. Okay. The, uh, the biggest lesson you've learned here. The biggest lesson I've learned from a man, I, I guess being in relationships, okay, um, everybody is not worth my time. Mm. Yeah. Every man is not worth my time. I, I believe that I've given energy and time that I cannot get back to a lot of the get wrong back. dudes. Yeah. Yep. And to be yep. able to recognize that he was wrong, sometimes we recognize it and we just linger and let it go, let it... That would be it for me. That's the biggest lesson I learned, mm -hmm. just dating guys. You know, everybody is not worth my time. Some people are meant to be your friend. And that's it. Yeah. Or nothing at all. Or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Or nothing. For sure. A absolutely.